Namaste. Namaste. Welcome to our first session of Chatinar. I welcome our guests. I welcome the other attendees who are on. Thank you very much for making time. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for seeing our little stickers, advertisements on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, etc., etc. So allow me to very quickly introduce my guests, our guests, and uh, talk a little, little bit, just a little bit about what the session is going to be, and we can. Dipankar Haldar. Dipankar runs Jalongi, Jalongi.com. Jalongi, incidentally, is the name of a river deep down inside of West Bengal. And he's picked in that name. One, of course, because he's selling fish now. And also because he was born in a place very close to that river. I have known Dipankar for a period of time now. He's, he's, uh, he, he used to run Badawan Retail. One famous brand from that list you, you might know was called Spinach. He ran some 70 odd stores, consolidated them. Later, he went on to Walmart. Um, I remember he got the easy day format running. He did the digital branding, digital, uh, he opened up the digital wing of, of Walmart at that time, Walmart JV in India, of course. And over a period of time, gradually has opened up again as, as, uh, Jalangi, Jalangi.com. So they operate from the Calcutta region, Delhi region, Mumbai and Hyderabad. And he was just telling me just on backstage that they are about to open up in Bangalore pretty soon. That's okay. the The second uh, guest is Mandar. Mandar Ovlekar is head of IT and systems at Future Supply Chain. Future Supply Chain, as many of you might know from the last bits of news in the last 15, 20 days, is an important cog in the wheel for overall future retail. So that's the supply chain arm. And as future retail has always done, they consolidate across their different companies the common elements, pull it out as a cost center, make it efficient, and push it out as a profit center. That's what happened for future supply chain as well. Um, Mandar himself has been connected with retail in some shape or form, of course, technology, most of his life, all across in pyramid retail in other comp uh, companies. But this perhaps is the first time where it's not directly connected to retail, but it's still supporting retail. So future supply chain, as, as I mentioned, is the supply chain arm. They're the uh, third party logistics, warehousing, trucking, all, all that, supporting future group and other customers. And finally, uh, Kaushik is my partner in crime, if you will. He runs Network Gain. It's a consulting company. And as the name says, and, and you will see in our uh, bios, Network Gain brings people together. It's a collaborative consulting company. And finally, some of you might know me. My name is Suhas. I run Trinand. We are a strategy consulting company. So with the, no, with the introductions done, I quickly will start setting the stage for the conversation that we are going to have today. So we have about 40 odd minutes that we will talk through. Conversation is about retail. Conversation is about logistics, about distribution, especially perhaps the changes, the uh, sudden sudden shifts that we have seen during this pandemic period. Conversation about how is it that Mandar have, has seen in terms of logistics, how is it that they have supported retail? What different stuff have they done? Similarly for Debunker, how has he seen his logistics getting impacted with the buns, with lockdown, stuff like that? How does his supply work? What has his consumer behavior been? That's what we are wanting to know. That's what we are wanting to talk about. And I will work as the Sutradhar, as sort of your host. And as we go along, I'll perhaps keep introducing points for us to talk through. So maybe the first piece of conversation, I'd love to hear. What did you see in terms of base challenges during this pandemic time for Dipankar and uh, Mandar? And what did you do? How did you react to fix those situations and, and bounce back? So, Maybe Dipankar? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dipankar, um, yeah. All right. So, um, you know, it was pretty interesting. You know, I, after spending 20, 25 years in the industry, 
I possibly thought that, you know, I know everything and I've done like few startups before that. But that day when we came to know about that, you know, okay, uh, there's a, you know, the Mr. Modi uh, announced that there is a lockdown. So things are going to stand still. And, you know, we didn't know what hit us. So it's basically it's like, see, for us, the logistics, so the, we, I had conversation with, uh, the first thing was basically, I mean, thankfully, we, we run this whole company with our in-source employees. So very little uh, of our team members right from the beginning, because I'm a gray-haired entrepreneur. I don't understand outsourcing. You know, I possibly is like little more, uh, you know, uh, suspicious about relationships, and especially when in, you are in a startup situation. So I took it in a different way. So we said that we'll have everything in-house. So... We had our customer gear people, our delivery boys, our drivers, our cutters, our everybody, you know, except the technology, which is outsourced. Um, everything is everything is on our own. So that's an advantage we had. But when we came to uh, this situation, now, you know, I still remember, you know, the, the driver said that, you know, um, in Calcutta, who obviously is the first step of getting the stuff from the market or the, you know, from Sundarban area to to the warehouse. Now he said that, you know, he is not going to come, you know, because his mom says that, you know, it's very safe, unsafe to kind of, you know, go out and start working. So, you know, I had I, my first few days of, you know, first one or two days of conversation was, you know, talking to uh, each of them and to make sure that they are comfortable. In fact, and I had went ahead and announced that, you know, yes, we are aware of the risk, but end of the day, we are in the business of food. If we stop serving our people or serving you know our customers they will not have food just imagine if they don't have food so we have a responsibility in hand having said that there is a risk obviously and has been spoken about that you know people may fall ill and it's a contagious disease so obviously you know, you, your family may fall ill so yeah. we announced that that we had announced an unlimited medical coverage we said that you know anybody in this period you know they fall sick and your fam family falls sick i am going to take care of that Oh, that's great. Yeah. So I'm going to take care of that. That actually gave them, and, and you know, actually we had to spend not a single rupee because we mm -hmm. never had that, but they needed, they needed that assurance. So that is what we did. And then obviously there are many places where, um, um, you know, a lot of unknowns came in, like, you know, uh, the, the people who are the administration, administration was managing the, you know, the on ground. Now, they also didn't have information completely that the policeman who's on ground, he didn't have the kind of complete information. He started, he didn't, I mean, what is the licenses you'll need? What kind of documentation you'll need to just to prove that you are in the food? Now, there are a lot of confusion which happened. So I think, you know, thankfully, you know, I found, you know, both, you know, the Calcutta police and, you know, the other people in the administration, they are absolutely kind of, they surprised me, I'm telling you. They absolutely surprised me in terms of, you know, extending their, their uh, um, you know, their help. And, uh, you know, which was basically, which after this COVID, I look at, you know, the, you know, administration, especially the police of Calcutta and other places in a very different light. You know, I'll give you an example where the same driver who's, you know, I had to kind of had to had a constant conversation with his mom. He was actually in the, he used to keep the vehicle at, at, at his home because, you know, in the early morning, we need to go and pick up the fish from, you know, the markets. Now, this his locality, locality people in his locality actually stopped him. He said that, you know, you can't go around because you can't. So he, they kind of locked them around. You know, this, is, this happens at four o'clock in the morning. So and then we call up the police headquarters in Calcutta and then we, you know, ask them for help. And in next half an hour, we get a help and we are on. And I think it's basically it's a, it's a you know, this I would say that um, with what has helped us to kind of survive? I mean, incidentally, we have grown four times of what we have we have before COVID. So, and that's possibly because we have not closed even for a single day, despite all the challenges. So we we had had a team, we had a kind of core strength which is not dependent on somebody else, and we had been able to communicate to our team kind of frequently, and that's what was very important. I think that it's basically is about you know five or six things that you know I I believe that you know which has survived us through in this period. One is obviously faith in that whatever we are doing, that in yes, you will get it through, you know, so it's basically whatever is the problem, you come start with that, you know, it's basically, and then you have, you start reinventing, you know, you start doing things differently, you know, so, you know, you need to stay in touch with them, you need to make sure that you're assuring people, 
you know, to make sure that you're optimizing because one big piece out here is that, you know, you know, the money supply or, you know, you will really need to keep your money very close to your heart, especially for a startup like ours. So you just need to make sure that if you, can I spend it tomorrow? Can I kind of not spend it? And we start doing that because you know, it's basically is like, and if you run out of money or if you run out of will, you know, or you run out of your steam as it is for any other business, you are done. So I think I would say is, 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 you know, retail is a complex business. And I think this actually is, you know, uh, the biggest problem was to kind of get people around to deliver for you, you know, whether it's your own team uh, uh, to take care of the emotions of which was running, you know, in the customer side to sure, you know, to make sure that in his basic, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll go through the discussion. So I found that, you know, there are some people, they were asking that, you know, can you supply the fish whole? You know, and, and I couldn't understand that. Why should somebody ask for like 5 kg, 4 kg fish whole? And we normally cut and process for free and clean and wash. And these customers, and then I was very curious. And I had a conversation that why would you kind of, you know, you know, would like to have this as a kind of, you know, as a whole fish? He said that, no, no, we just want to kind of, Make sure that you know there is no contamination and touch and all that. So, we cut it. Now, sure. you know that is what it is. You know, this is crazy, and we have to tell them, we have to assure them to listen. We take all the steps to make sure that you know there's nothing goes wrong. You know, out there, but it's it has been a kind of journey. It didn't happen in one day. So, I think assurance is one word which was very critical to make sure that you know we are staying together and we stayed together. And I'm sure all of us who are coming out of this, you know, the crisis, we are. Uh, been able to do that, you know, because we are we are together. Yeah, Deepankar. Deepankar, as you rightly said, assurance is a word which which actually um, uh, was a word of focus across all organizations, especially in uh, 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 people like us in the consumption uh, sector. So <clears throat> that was there, and and uh, we have we had to ensure that we give this assurance to uh, the people who are working for us and for the customers also so that 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 was that was also our basically focus uh, uh, to uh, to keep us alive in this uh, uh, challenging times so covid 19 so basically uh, the given the uncertainty brought i feel that it will go into history as a of mankind as a event uh, of learning which i feel so all kind of learnings you get you, you just like you said surprises also so that so there were surprises wherein you got help from uh, 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 points where you never expected any help, or or wherever you expected you might not have got those help. Yes. So that that is all that is all what has happened in during this period, and it's a learning phase. See, as the lockdown uh, was announced, uh, so in general, basically there were calls for complete halt or uh, uh, restrictions of movement, uh, bearing the movement of essentials which were. Secondly, the right, like what you said, uh, you face challenges in uh, what exactly is essential. The definition of essential commodities itself uh, was changing very frequently. So <clears throat> that was also a challenge. So throughout the supply chain, uh, right from the manage manufacturers to retailers to providers like us, supply chain, all the challenges came. So now there was there was a challenge wherein what to uh, what to uh, produce, how to produce. How to get those uh, uh, people became a challenge. Secondly, raw material also became a challenge. For for example, <clears throat> there is an essential commodity which is getting manufactured, uh, but the packing material didn't come under the uh, essential scope. Again, <clears throat> convincing the authorities like uh, the providers like us or a spare parts for uh, auto industry, for example. So convincing the authorities uh, to uh, uh, to uh, let them make aware that this is a particular commodity which is essential uh, which is not an essential by the thing but if you see if, if, if auto part is used for an ambulance it becomes an essential so getting permissions around that so this kind of challenges we as a, uh, a service provider uh, we faced it and eventually we got help uh, from people and we are able to able to open warehouses uh, of this kind of nature also so the, the, so uh, apart from this, uh, uh, if you if you talk about uh, employees, uh, so you have you said that you you already have uh, everything uh, in house. Uh, unlike us, most of us seventy percent of our cadre is outsourced. So <clears throat> what what happened was that um, uh, these employees during the lockdown, when the lockdown was initiated, uh, we uh, we uh, were to communicate these people that you be. Uh, 
uh, stay put wherever you are uh, to ensure that safety that kind of assurance we had to give it to them so that uh, because these are the people who who are, who who, uh, who will actually come to our help when actually their uh, help is required uh, another aspect if you talk about um, uh, our industry was that uh, as uh, during that period of lockdown was that visibility of vehicles so <clears throat> especially those which were of non essential uh, commodities which were stuck in transit so we had around somewhere around 50 60 vehicles which were stuck in transit we, we were not aware where the drivers were where they have left the vehicle all those challenges came and effectively our ground team the operation teams uh, got into action uh, did contract tracing of drivers and ensured that those vehicles comes to such, uh, certain locations where the material is uh, safe and we got we got uh, help in that sector also even in case especially in case of polten uh, vehicles Polten vehicles are the nature of product. It requires refrigeration. So there also we <clears throat> basically had challenges for the same transit uh, uh, vehicles. But anyhow, with with special commission solved, we they were able to uh, ensure that they were at the right uh, uh, locations. Another aspect which I feel uh, uh, during this period, uh, uh, during during the period when the unlockdown was announced, unlockdown was also kind of a Uh, a sudden kind of thing, but it went on gradually. So, for us as an organization, people uh, safety was a priority. So, we had to take all the measures to ensure uh, that uh, uh, we we uh, we ensure as much as much as uh, uh, contactless operations that we do. So, what we did was um, we we ensured that the documents are exchanged in the drivers in the contactless manage the manner. Then, uh, apart from that, we had. Uh, we had initiated regular sanitization of vehicles guidelines sops uh, of working and material handling were communicated and a lot of coordination happened and uh, we ensured that this has to be followed so it it basically was not an uh, uh, not an easy uh, task or a, uh, a cake walk kind of thing because this kind of physical distancing or social distancing uh, uh, thing uh, there is a lot of behavioral changes that is required and to deal with uh, behavioral challenge, uh, changes for people uh, 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 so uh, the, uh, typically if you see the uh, hr is interested to do all this kind of job but now in this covid it became decentralized so there was no hr there was nothing so it was all operations all all people become operations people and they had to ensure that uh, to bring uh, this, uh, this kind of behavioral uh, changes so there was a lot of interactions uh, with us it, it didn't it, it it was not very easy So we had set up, we had canteens in our warehouses. If you see, big canteens, uh, warehouse wherein, when at a time there there used to be around hundred, hundred and fifty people sitting and having their breakfast, dinners, and all. So ensuring physical distances in canteen. Um, we also do a lot of automation. We have automation set up. So also ensuring that in automation set up itself, people doesn't come close to us. All those kind of infra changes, uh, 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 the highlighters and everything were put in place. Lot of things happened here. Now, uh, with, with this, what what we uh, what we achieved was that we we saw that we were able to gain confidence of these people. So they they were they 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 when they walked into a warehouse, they were assured that they are walking into a, a safe environment. So this this is what this is what uh, uh, major. So here, uh, so being an uh, technology person, here nothing sort of technology uh, uh, thing helped, but it was all <coughs> all uh, the uh, Uh, the uh, proactive actions which the which my team my, the operations uh, 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 took it it was it was more of a tactical kind of a solution another challenges which uh, which we faced was with respect to uh, like any other uh, transportation organization like us was vehicle utilization so uh, which is which is which is a major uh, kpi in a transportation industry so uh, uh, with with covid 19 uh, most of the customers uh, volumes were down uh and very unpredictable so they at times certain certain times the, uh, the when the supplies came from manufacturers the volume increased sometimes it decreased so it, it was very unpredictable so there was need for a lot of tactical solutions for people on ground to ensure that vehicles are not under under utilized because it's effectively a cost for us <clears throat> so and 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 also we had uh, one thing in mind uh, with respect to it there should not be loss of sales to customer also that was one assurance we we, uh, we we had in mind that we had to give it to customer 
yeah you rest be assured we will ensure that stocks will reach uh, at the required destination so all that things all those tactical things happen so we had many many uh, uh, instances wherein um, our operation teams uh, brought out such solutions vehicle sizes were changed bigger vehicles were changed to smaller vehicles uh, more customers were serviced in one vehicle as volumes were down we were able to do that so that's how we we were able to achieve somewhere around 90 to 95 percentage of vehicle utilization so so and and we and we also consciously took a call that uh, that let the uh, let there be a marginal increase in cost per carton rather than incurring a considerable loss uh, uh, by underutilizing the vehicle so the, this were the this were the tactical solutions which were there another thing so uh, a minor role of technology came in this uh, short in arm kind of uh, situation but uh, uh, from tech point of view as a strategy uh, future supply chain uh, past two years we have ensured that all our uh, zonal uh, offices the people in zonal offices or people in uh, head office or supervisory staff staffs are mobile in nature that means they have in provided we were we were uh, we were uh, very much lucky that uh, the business continuity was not a challenge we also had ensured that more, all the critical people had uh, the collaboration tools to like bd guys to uh, have uh, collaboration with their customers we ensured uh, uh, go to meeting uh, google meet kind of uh, solutions are available to users so that ensured uh, connectivity with the customers uh, with respect to being visibility of their consignment and everything so so we we found this utilization so we when when we did an analysis of uh, how much time we are spending so at least on an average 9 hours were getting spent across all the departments for, uh, for in, in in collaboration that was either with customers that were either, um, or with uh, uh, or within peers or some projects which are going on so this is how uh, this is how we ensured uh, we we we, uh, we took some uh, actions from technology point of view yes there were challenges for people uh, like uh, commercial department whose majority of the uh, operation depends upon the physical documentation or data entry which happens on a physical there we faced challenges but uh, but eventually uh, this change management was uh, done so we started accepting uh, digital copies of invoices and started booking uh, so that's that, that that's how uh, that's how we manage uh, this kind of department so we currently also do not have uh, exact pol uh, policy or procedure but eventually uh, with the learning of covid we will uh, definitely have some learning some some procedures in space down the line uh, coming period end user work from home uh, support was also a challenge it's still a challenge we still don't have a mechanism most of the organization doesn't have a mechanism who are used to a corporate kind of a office kind of a this thing but uh, i think that there also we will we may have some improvements so yes that's this this is what uh, challenges uh, overall uh, um, future supply chain face and it, it it would have been common for all the supply chain uh, services people in the industry thanks for that yeah uh, i i think there is a lot of ground to cover so we'll just keep moving so let, let me flip flip this conversation towards a different direction now maybe to more towards the consumer so one thing that i noticed as as a uh, retail guy myself having done retail stuff as, as well um having consulted in re retail for a long while one interesting thing that i saw i think for the first time grocery in e-commerce finally made that breakthrough finally finally made that breakthrough it had not really gone as far as it went in these 4 5 6 6 months um earlier even me for example except in some particular slices of grocery we would always want to touch and feel the vegetable touch, touch and feel the fish or the, or the meat or whatever else this changed this changed dramatically and i wanted to loop this back to now to koshik to talk about this maybe more as a consumer and how much of a change he saw how much he saw in his neighborhood as well all right so thank you thank you so much and thank you mandar and konkar for the insight as well while i conclude i'll also say there's a question on the panel uh, for the panel that that has come up and i'll, I'll read that at the end of my note quickly as a consumer i think my perspective uh, thankfully urbanized consumers the approach has always been big baskets and amazon groceries and grocer so not much uh, was changed but i think 
barring the initial period when obviously a lot of these things were unclear, we didn't know what the policies were, will they distribute, will they deliver, so on and so forth. So, so we did move back to the older form of walking up to the neighborhood store, buying it from the Kirana store and moving and keeping the life going on. But sooner, thanks to some of the actions that the governments have taken, that some of these deliveries began and that kind of put us back into the same pedestal what we were used to in the general walk of life. But largely at the neighborhood, at least in the neighborhood that I live in, fairly serious citizens were here. Uh, most of my neighbors are fairly serious citizens. So hence, that adoption for them for digital was a slight challenge. And I kind of played a community service role in terms of being a delivery boy plus, uh, you know, supporting them to order online and so on and so forth. That's what, what it is. So with that, I quickly move to the question. This is from, you know, from each of the panel member. And the question is about, uh, could you give what is the difference, single largest difference in managing the retail business, compare and contrast it with the global financial depression or recession that we had versus the global So the way I, I see, see this, uh, also the individual who asked this question, the way I see this and the way I differentiate first is when we talk about a recession, that essentially is two, three different things coming together. One, of course, is economically the amount of liquidity or the money in hand of corporations and common people like you and I, that starts squeezing out. The liquidity starts drying out. Pandemic might or might not cause that. In this particular situation, and it is interesting in terms uh, of a question as well, because I would have picked this topic up just in a while. But uh, in this pandemic, though there has been tremendous amount of setback in certain sectors of the economy, certain sectors in terms of people as, as well, there are, there are lots and lots of people who have lost their jobs, lost employment. So obviously, for them, the pandemic has not been a great situation if you are not able to find money to be able to eat. But also contrast this with a situation where in the stock market, the amount of liquidity is significant right now, which is why you have uh, the IPOs which have go gone across in the last last week, week and a half. They have gotten oversubscribed by 150 times, so which obviously means that and 150 times for retail, not the corporate and, and the institutional segment. There is liquidity in the hands of people. Also, if you, if you look at this, there has been a fair amount of support, financial support, which has been. So there is that difference. Pandemic does definitely does impact and cause recession. Same time, one could cause the other, but not necessarily directly related. I, I'll let the others talk quickly about this and, and then we move on to the second question which has come up. Second, third question actually which has come up. And uh, also, should you want to be visible, you would want to raise your hand, the second icon from top, and one of us can give you the mic and you will be on video. So, Mandar Koshik. I think my connection is gone. Mandar, you are on. Not able to hear Suhas. You, you are live, Mandar. Mandar, you are on. Somehow I am not able to hear Suhas. Uh, that's okay. If you want to just give a comment on what the question was in terms of your view on that recession, financial recession versus the pandemic, you could. So uh, what what I feel was that uh, so recession was we have been seeing a certain slowdown since last year. If you see uh, a period from last July, there uh, we have the, the slowdown was visible. So uh, by, by the time the March came, so it it was it was COVID actually added as a factor to it because it uh, so uh, uh, with the business going, we, the, there was still uh, liquidity which was coming through retail or whatever the amount of selling which was happening. But effectively, the entire uh, lockdown thing happening, the, 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 the organization started, the organization didn't, uh, the revenue impacted um, for most of the organizations. And that's how it impacted. So it, it, it became a factor for the 
uh, for this slowdown which is there i cannot say it completely as a recession end of stuff but it is a, it is a, it, it, it definitely added to the um, as a factor to the uh, slowdown what people so as suhas rightly said people started um, saving money so uh, due to this uncertainty and lot of lot of lot of expenditure so they all they they were cautious in spending their, uh, their each and every rupee which is there that so again that also added so it's it's kind of a cascading impact which which i feel which happened after that and eventually uh, if, as the things normalizes uh, i i strongly feel that it will it will it will normalize yeah so i i, I i look at two things one is you know there was a uh, there is a lot of pressure which was on availability of manpower you know so and that 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 obviously will mean that you know there will be less productivity in the overall various part not some of them will have less some of them will have uh, kind of more that is one side of the story so, which means that you know there will be there are less circulation of money there is less kind of generation of you know the salary or even the wages they the wind down and which will have implication on consumption um so it's like you know talk about the laborers who would have gone back from say gurgaon to uh, uh bihar or in up uh, they obviously will be out of money right you know so obviously it's, it's so that and obviously when uh, there will be an indirect impact on the consumption in the local area that is one piece and other piece is i as i mentioned that it's very important at this point in time and it's true for anyone to kind of hold on to their money it's not that there is no money but you will not spend it unless you absolutely need it right okay. so it's basically so it's like you know you would like to have a kind of you know in the good time you would like to have a pizza every day or you know every every week like in a uh, but you don't have it maybe you cook it at home right mm-hmm. so you know the when you cook it at home obviously in this very different kind of consumption i wouldn't call it recession but i think 2020 was a period where a lot of fundamentals of question businesses uh, were questioned so if you are good and if you know the business you will survive and the people who had a kind of um, uh, the business which had got a lot of fat and uh, they suffered so you know so I, and, and this is what i look at it so basically so and they will keep on if they are want to they, if they are able to come back and uh, and uh, you know and and re- i would say they 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 kind of reinvent the way they were operating before you know looking at their organization structures processes how they spend money what kind of people they have what kind of kpis they have you know one big thing which i realized and i think it's relevant not in the context of recession but i think it's about reinventing this or maybe i can take it up separately it's about you know we as a startup we didn't have a governance which was uh which was like a corporate like you know we, we used to kind of we used to interact with people whenever it was needed not like in a regular daily huddles and kpis processes and you know the weekly uh, d- dashboards and all that and i'll tell you we are a very different organization right now last six months we have a daily huddle every day we look at because we don't really know that why these guys are in a sitting there and whether they're working or they're watching netflix movie <laughs> and i can tell you that there are some people who are doing that you can make it out you can make it out only when so i would say that's a new way of or that i wouldn't say it's a new way of doing business it's possibly is the right way of doing business so i think you know that's basically is where this lot of these people who are not doing the business right away and they suffered they will come back and say oh there is a recession and you know there is a rain which happened so i didn't sell you know so they will all bring all these macro issues and do that i don't think we need to worry so much about that please we just need to get back to the fundamentals of the business the business is where you spend some money and resources to generate certain wealth and whatever we generate out of it has to be bigger than what you have put in that's what is the value creation so if you focus your efforts on value creation and that's what we need to do it more than that all the facts and all those kind of you know in you know, a support life support that we have seen is gone so you can't like and live in those dream and you can't faff around and kind of still survive this is reality so i think 2020 is a reality of the story if you are a good player in cricket 2020 will tell you whether you're good or not it's not a test match mm. lovely thank you i will go on to the second question from murli it goes i think healthcare and education services are following pandemic and i guess he means that he's it's they are 
picking up pace and they are working with the pandemic to be successful this the and he goes on to ask are there some lessons for retail and distribution from this yeah i'm um, obviously yes because i would tell you uh, so one uh, you know i'm talking about my experience during this this time uh, when uh, in, in, sitting in gurgaon i'll tell you that you know that the modern format and online and so what has gone up right now in this period is home delivery it's not online business now most of these guys you know is basically if you go deep into the numbers they would have lost because you know the last mile delivery was difficult the sourcing side there were challenges and it needed a more, much more tight tight management you know so see there is a demand you know there's a tailwind that you are getting from the demand side which is healthcare and you know nutrition and you know, insurance all of those you know which we are getting but on the other hand it basically is the, for the retailers you need to make sure that you need to be more perfect because the competition has actually come back to your traditionals once again right so if you look at food retail or in you know, a food as food and grocery is a sector 90% is uh, 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 traditional i wouldn't call them unorganized uh, because they are pretty much organized you know so um, and about you know 8% modern format and about 2% online right and i think if nilson comes up with this record i would possibly find that some of them you know the 98% would have gone up i would believe that it will be at least 93 94% after this pandemic which is so i think we have to learn from the traditionals because they are profitable right they are profitable every day and it's not like you know the we are the companies that the corporate we say okay we'll be profitable in like 3 years 4 years these guys obviously they may not be able to scale up but they are profitable as a unit i think we have a lot of learning to take from those those people and say that you know what we can do better you know i know that in my neighborhood you know the fruit bala will be sending you know this whatsapp you know the all the photographs of uh, you know the photographs of uh, the veggies and the fruit he's got in store to my wife and she will kind of you know put on whatsapp she will kind of put an order and this guy will deliver in the evening you know so they have learned they have learned and i think we need to learn from them in in terms of what it gets you know it's basically when i was looking for you know pizza cheese in amazon and xyz i didn't get it but hari om ji had it <laughs> yeah, so so th- i think we need to learn from these traditionals about the survival and reinventing the way they have learned home delivery they have learned home delivery more than anybody else you know i think basically so whatever we think as in kind of online player are our strength they have learned it guys so i think we need to kind of i would say that i'm taking it the, this question in a different manner yes i think for retailers the biggest you know the learning for us to kind of how do you get better in execution and that's basically is what you know i have learned you know from the traditionals and i have learned from the you know all these days and i think that's what we need to take it from there and yes obviously the healthcare and other companies that they are doing a great job in terms of uh, you know the having a businesses which are uh, which doesn't need physical proximity so you can do business by remote so i think those are the few pieces which we are doing in terms of you know uh, we have to do it because we are not together right you know uh, we 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 people are in multiple places even within the same city and and how do you kind of connect and be productive yeah i agree dipankar so to add to it, uh, so i agree entirely with you uh, in addition to that what i feel was that uh, <clears throat> the uh, so uh, nobody was prepared for lockdown basically so <clears throat> why so why was there a lock, lockdown there are basically uh, two fundamental if you see from the government point of view so one was that they wanted to uh, avoid the uh, uh, the spread of this uh, flu one second the healthcare industry or healthcare system itself was not well equipped so there are two aspects with wherein wherein they had to force this lockdown and that eventually um, collapsed everything and uh, there was a need or kind of a situation wherein everybody tried to do something for survival so eventually this <coughs> lockdown will be a learning uh for it's not only for india it's, it's globally so have their uh, ensure that the healthcare system is proper okay they have ample facilities um, uh, facilities not not only with respect to uh, the physical infra but also from people perspective also like we, we, there were cases wherein you had doctors but you don't had support staff support staff but, but there were no ample oxygen supplies 
there, there were there, there were ventilators shortage which were there. So all this infra related everything. This um, so this this is a lot. So this this uh, this infrastructure from the healthcare perspective, I think there will be a lot of change which will which will which will see in coming years, and hopefully hopefully will be ready for the next pandemic. So we cannot avoid this kind of pandemics which is there. Uh, but hope uh, so the next pandemic will be better off from the first. We had earlier pand pandemic in last century, pandemic in last century, but eventually there was no nothing learning which we if we took. Was still uh, there was some improvement, but this uh, at this kind of uh, uh, this century, it it be, uh, all the globally all the nations and all the organizations and government will ensure that they have this infrastructure proper in place so that they help this business to continue and economy to grow. Or they may not have uh, that much impact on the econo uh, economy as they are having right now. This is what I feel. You know, one piece I'll I'll add to this. You know, which is. Uh, there is one thing that we need to learn from some of the industries which has been uh, doing possibly you know the way uh, which is uh, which is right in this current scenario and which retail needs to pick up is about uh, the building brand now see, the physical the mode of in you know, a building brand and trust um, is uh, uh, is actually is a, there are better ways of doing it social media social presence how do you kind of on you know, how do you kind of create a brand and trust through social media is more relevant. I think the retailers typically they don't do that. You know, I think that is one piece I would say that you know we need to kind of learn. And I think yesterday I was in another panel discussion where you know somebody from the health and nutrition period and she mentioned that you know I think basically the relevance of social media to kind of build your brand and kind of to be seen yourself as a trustworthy kind of you know uh, company. Uh, that the whole equation has changed now. So I think some of those companies have done a kind of great job in terms of having their digital presence. You know, we as a retailer, you know, because we are fighting it out on the ground every day in terms of how do you make sure that we buy fish yeah. and we supply it to the home. But I think, you know, and I, I that was an eye opener for me. I think I'm, I take it as a kind of, you know, as a, as a learning from me that, you know, I think how do you create retail brands on social media stronger will be the need because you will not be kind of you can't depend on you know the physical crowd and highly high, high traffic places where you can put up you know hoarding or newspapers you know I, I've not seen newspapers since last six months it doesn't come anymore so it's basically so you know so newspaper advertising how do you kind of you know how do you replace that you know it's basically I think that's one piece which I guess uh, I would add to this conversation yeah Deepanga right rightly for your kind of industry also uh, direct customer connect will be very very much important and i feel that those people who are trying to build their brand now will look out for much more technology interventions like having a, a customer data platform kind of stuff uh, for more use of analytics which will have at the back end and uh, having a ha keeping customer in center a complete 360 degree view on what is required a customer uh, so there are there, there are two ways. one you have is customer and customer there has to be easy mechanism wherein customer reach back to you so all those te technology interventions around these areas will start happening. People have started doing it. Some, some, some have already initiated. Some are in, uh, some have it in their roadmap. That is going to happen. Yeah. Thanks, Pandar. I, I think while talking about that, you have actually answered the next question automatically, which asks exactly that. That does the panel think that now companies will invest more in tech in areas of retail and distribution, keeping in mind the new normal and work from home. So. So yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely, I and mean, absolutely, that's not a kind of, that's not an option. Hmm. That's not an option because I took out my money on you know the transit media of the holdings and all that. I took all the money out. I said, you know, and all these newspaper guys when they call me that, you know, I think we'll come back to you. But at this point in time, I'm going to put all my money on the digital media and the technical because you know, you know, uh, yeah. So you know, are you? Uh, uh, if I may ask a question, uh, Dipanga, are you looking out for uh, getting your vendor base, uh, some technology intervention uh, 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 on the vendor side of it, wherein they will be able to easily, because because your kind of industry, you don't know uh, what category of fish uh, right now, and you know, uh, uh, you know, forecasting of what kind of fish will sell it tomorrow. How how are you working on that front? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a long way. I'll tell you that in his basic, that's a long way. Because I'll tell you in our case, you know, uh, 
you are dealing with the people who are fishermen you know so they possibly have a smartphone but they will possibly will have an analog phone as well so i think i think in few years time we will have a scenario where we have a real time in availability of the prices so we need to bring in the price transparency because you don't know in pandemic okay. you may be again one place would be selling at 200 another place is be selling at 300 you don't know because end of the day how do you get that information it's not available you okay. possibly have for you know the for poultry you have some rates which come as a published rate but you know in lot of cases those rates are not even real so mm-hmm. you know i think for us yes it will be it's a long down long it's 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 a, it's a requirement for us because i would say fish and seafood as a sector it's a very large one yeah, but if you look at you know milk you know that's what we actually pay as a um as our reference because you know the milk you know at some long time back people used to have uh, you know there were few cows and buffaloes and they used to sell it to their neighbors or they to go to the local mithai wala and then that is what it you know the, until the time when dr kurian and nddb came in and they started setting up this all these collection centers and then transparency happened fat based pricing and then you know then there is a stability right and they know that you know is basically when you are in a kind of right now the fisherman fisherman he knows that he doesn't you know if if he catches more he will get less price because you know the guy in the middle he is going to squeeze him and say that okay now you know i i don't i'm not going to give you 10 rupees a price i'll give you only 5 and now the fisherman is stuck there because he doesn't have any other revenue so i think it's a long way for us as a sector it's not a vendor based model because you know this has got multiple layers in fish and seafood sector and more, many of these layers are non value adding uh, mm-hmm. so so and they are they don't want to have the transparency of information so technology what it does is te- technology brings in the information right and then these guys will not would not like to have that information because the moment they have it then they will lose their edge and they will stop their you know they stop earning less Correct. and it's like you know, if you buy fish in europe mm. it will have a little little you know the little you know the, the uh, code barcode on the top of it you scan that you will know that you know who's the fisherman which country it has come what is yes, the water yes. body and so on so you have a traceability right. now here you don't have it you know export has got some requirement so there is a requirement of you know, geo mapping of the water bodies but you know i have spoken to some of the exporters and i was interviewing some of these guys and say that okay tell me what did you do about this geo mapping and all that did you go to the water body and did you check that you know is basically mm. the water is still good and clean or not mm. i said no we don't do that mm. so you know how do you know that you know, that water body is still there maybe that water body is not there there is a building on the top of it <laughs> so 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 I, all i'm saying is that we have a long way to go and i think we we you know as a company and we want to be in the forefront of this and we we will as we go bigger and as we have kind of you know support from uh, you know from the investors and so on and the volume from the consumer we will do all of those you know so i think one of the big project that i'm looking at obviously is to kind of bring a kind of an exchange where people can check that are right at this moment point in time you know chennai has got what is the price for pomfret and what is bombay and what is kind of kerala and so on and it goes because end of the day if you are if you know that you know your you know the, the what 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 you are putting as an effort and what is due to you i don't think i will mind to kind of share my cost structure mm. right and that is a long way uh, yeah. uh, that is a long way but once we get into having said that you know we have we use basic technology we operate the run this business through kind of about you know hajar uh, you know uh, uh, these whatsapp groups so the guys you know my i have about in you know, a whole bunch of you know the people who are the villagers who buy fish for us in uh, in uh, in uh, in in say sundarban area or in say deha or in orissa and those other places you know they are connected with us on this uh, on this whatsapp we tell them we try to educate them but i i believe in truly in terms of what you said that yes we will have in in a couple of years time we will have a scenario that we will have you know uh, you know an app in their hand where you know there are multiple guys who are operating in multiple auction market and they are connected to each other and then they are kind of compare notes in terms of what, what prices it's available and what is there and which will which will which will bring in kind of you know uh, better pricing price transparency and uh, also it will you know i what i'm also more interested is basically you know to give a fair value to to this uh, to the fishermen because end up there you know, if they don't get it it doesn't exist and you know, today you know the, does the fisherman son want to be in fishing business i'll tell you 99% cases they'll say no correct and if that stops in a very low get that and it's not true for only fish 
which for any other you know the basic commodity basic basic businesses so i would say technology will play a role all of us you know people who are uh, as dr kurian said that you know you know that the, the revolution will come when when uh, you know i'm not exactly the way you know i'm telling because i don't remember it's a long sentence uh, so the the real revolution yeah. will come when the traditional wisdom and the and the knowledge of you know the knowledge of the educated people like us they come together and the right. reason you know why am i after 25 years i'm you know being from i am ahmedabad and <laughs> you know being in walmart why am i selling fish i'm mm-hmm. doing that because you know, i think it's basically if i can do a kind of one play and one cent in this and 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 if we can inspire others to come in and if i can inspire you know somebody like you in the tech side to come and help me out and i think we would be doing something big for this country and big for the people who are in this sector okay. is it true yeah it's a 20 billion dollar industry you know if you look at the number correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. agree with him thank you dipankar so uh, one more question which is coming from the attendees is sort of in the line of where we were going what is that one thing that we would do differently preparing for the next pandemic or next perhaps such such lockdown type of a situation you know it's 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 it's, it's basically is what you know i have a very simple answer to this you know um um uh, what will a pilot do before it takes off i will answer that check list yeah everything works does everything work you will check that because you don't observe that before that we need to make sure that everything works get out of and the spat and yeah and we have a learning also yeah at this generation basically so uh, this is a generation wherein with the, uh, nobody has a learning it happened in large generation there are only few people who are there who have seen large pandemic yeah. but uh, uh, this generation at least uh, that learning can be documented and everything can each and every individual if 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 can contribute to this learning we can have a good amount of checklist as in language of suhas that uh, we should be able to cater uh, to uh, the next pandemic we may not have uh, exact answer right now that is the way uh, way uh, which uh, which we have to go yeah and and, and one more thing which is basically again which is which is i would say that uh, uh it's changing in our mindset because a lot of us actually get into this mindset of in you know, a perfection over speed now right. in pandemic you will not be will not survive 3 days right. if you look for perfection and not so just look for look for speed and not perfection right. correct yeah so i think that's a mindset change that you need to do that because typically it's like you know it will not work you know uh, where you say that i'll plan i'll hope and you will not have because you you will not have that so much of time to plan and review and all that stuff you need to do it on the run yeah so correct so right now all this so in covid what we uh, uh, has taught us that all the strategies and everything which which were have which were happening at the head of this uh, have <laughs> had been uh, done at the uh, ground level so all kind of if you see if you if you uh, if you see the uh, experiences of people you will see a lot of strategies which have which would have come out uh, uh, and basically it was only to survive so that 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 that's that's how it will work completely so well, I, i as a consultant i i always keep saying and mandar you and i i have had this conversation long time back so whenever somebody makes a strategy and what unfortunately ends up happening in most of these places strategies plans all that right so the nimble somehow goes away it becomes this book which sits in one corner on the table right. and and that's it so when a stimulus comes from the market or from wherever else what is it that your strategy tells you to do how do you change your strategy how do you move and react very quickly is what makes a difference and i i saw this unfortunately not happening with the super large e-commerce retailers in india during the pandemic when the unlockdown started to happen they did not have people so their supply chain completely crashed because they did not have people they had they had actually reacted laid off all their people they had laid off all their people those people who happened to be from slightly rural areas or semi urban areas they had very quickly gone back home and they could not come back correct so is that what you would want to do so these people ended up reacting very rapidly away from perhaps a thought out part and they just did a knee jerk so that perhaps is something that we should not be doing
So if there is a strategy, how do you remain with this strategy, but make it nimble? That's Correct. the way I, I see it. Correct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, you know, Suhash, the whole point is you this when you are talking about e-commerce, is one part of obviously so you are a retail, and then you have a last mile delivery. No, that is core to you because you know you will you are nothing if you are not being able to reach the product uh, to those homes. And you know, uh, uh, you know, we are possibly one of those kind of you know I would say the stupid companies you know who didn't didn't want to have a outsource uh, you know uh, the deli- none of my delivery people are actually uh, uh, actually outsourced because I believe that they are face of my company because if they don't represent Jalungi as a company you know because you know they don't see me they don't see my you know general managers or they see those people and and they are the people is basically they are the, in that. That you know, no matter you know the number of you know, products you have, what kind of great pricing you have, unless you have the last mile connect, and that's critical to the business. And how can you kind of outsource critical part of your business, you know, uh, because uh, you know you will you are vulnerable. So I think it is that's basically is what you know. I would say I I know that there are some of those big uh, e-commerce companies. They are still at about 50, 60 percent of their peak. Yeah, right now and and a lot of this is happening because you know they may not have their you know this, they will have an outsource partner who would have got this all these you know people from the Bihar UP and Bengal and all these people now you know the trains are not working and they have not come back and it's basically is like so and 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 and, and, and I hear a lot of other th- stuff happen it's basically they have not been paid you know so if you don't pay them they don't come back you know and if you if you pay them you don't know whether they will come or not so you are in a catch trying to do, right? So what will you do? Because it's basically, so there is, even if you give an assurance, you know that this guy may not come back. Mm-hmm. Because you don't, your relationship is not that strong, right? Because you are building on a, you are living on a transactional relationship. You have people who are a contract lever. And how can you kind of, you know, build a, build a, build a business, which is basically where core of your existing, uh, and that link is, is outsourced. So I think that's again, you know, the reinventing the way the whole model has to be done. And, and I think, you know, people will, uh, the companies which are, uh, uh, you know, the, which, which has got an intent to kind of, you know, come out of this, which has got an intent to be, you know, kind of get back, they will learn. And that's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that, you know, is the learning that all of us need to say. I think the first stage of learning is that, you know, to, to accept that, you know, I was stupid. Not so, yeah, a lot of introspection will go on. Uh, yeah. Quite so. So we're coming close to the art. I'll uh, do one more question and maybe we can wrap wrap with that unless there are other questions which come in. So the way the economy seems to be right now, though partly in recession, again with a lot of liquidity in people's hands, people are expecting a cracker of a Diwali in terms of both stock market and in terms of retail. So which means that there will be a sudden spurt and of course, as we all know, Diwali is when two thirds of the entire retail industry gets his money from, right? So Diwali at the festival season. So if, if and when that, as and when, when that happens for most of retail, how do you think you're going to cope? Dipankar, you, your, your people are all, all yours. Your supply and your entire supply chain is really yours. So may, maybe for you also, because your supply chain actually runs, the first part of it runs in complete rural areas. Unlike perhaps uh, Mandars, um, where there is a lot of technology intervention, though the warehouses are in rural areas, but that still remains on. I think it's a people-related problem as the growth spurts very quickly and then it will die out as well. So it's a shorter term thing. How do you think this particular year, how do you think you're going to uh, work with that? Okay, so firstly, it's because I, 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 I'm, I'm not kind of, you know, I don't want to sound kind of pessimistic, but... Uh, 2020 Diwali is not going to be big. Okay, so it's going to be bigger than this month or whatever. This is, I think, it will take some time before. Maybe 2021 Diwali will be in, the, in full glory. Um, however, having said that, in terms of, you know, there will be growth. You know, when there's a growth which has already been seen. So if there's a festivity time, but even people are going to hold on to their money, there will be less bonuses. And people will not sure that, you know, when it will come back because, you know, we know that, you know, and we've been told that this can come back in the winter. It can come back, right? So that is everybody is saying, right or wrong. So people will hold on to their money. I am not sure about you know the whether consumption is going to go big time in this Diwali. Now, having said that, I think you know it's basically for us as a company. We are, I think, I think this Monday we are going to announce that 
uh, it may not be timed with Diwali, but what we are doing is we are actually setting up an integrated uh, development center, which will be the first one will be in Sundarban's area. By December, we are going to put it up where we are going to upskill people so that you know, we can generate, you know, these people who can come in and work in our centers as well as they can come in and work in anywhere else in the country uh, as a delivery boy and those kind of places, you know. And we are also going to have kind of, you know, the, uh, giving access to the local fishermen so that they are they can give it, give those product to us so that it get, gets on. And then we are also trying to create some categories like, you know, which are rural products which will come in. So I think it's about taking those, uh, you know, uh, taking those, um, the initiative, the manpower issue that you mentioned, Suhash, is basically, I think we need to get there. You need to get there and start recruiting. And if they have gone back there, you know, if we can help them to come back and, and to the mainstream and because we'll need them back. Because, you know, if, 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 if the Diwali happens the way, you know, and I, I hope it happens, you know, although I'm, I'm not sure about it. So then, you know, where will you get these people who will be, who will be manning these items? But I would say that there will be a bigger Diwali in the online space. So people will still buy their stuff. So we would see the non-food retail, fashion retailers will, will be able to, you know, people will buy their dresses and the kapras and everything else and consumer durables more. Uh, physical retailers will have challenge, you know, I think. Uh, we'll have challenge, uh, uh, but unless, you know, they kind of have a kind of, you know, the, the, the delivery model strengthened up. So I would say that, in, yes, and I think we need to get back to, you know, call back our, you know, old friends and old employees, you know, whoever had lost them and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and get them on board and need to trust them, you know, buy for their tickets and, uh, you know, and give their old salaries and, you know, make sure that they come because, you know, you know, uh, there is no other way, you know. I mean, there's no other way. I mean, we are recruiting. We are getting people. We are also getting some of our older people, some little people who would have left us. So, my view, that's my mantra. I think we need to get back to the relationship and build a relationship which works. Correct. So, Suhas, for 3PL like us, wherein we are dealing with multiple customers, online customers also, Anchor being the uh, biggest, and other, other customers also, we are constantly in touch with uh, getting the volumes that are expected with the customers. And accordingly, also, we are ramping up uh, for this uh, Diwali season. We expect uh, a, a growth uh, this time, but it will not be a, a major one like what uh, Dipankar is saying. But definitely, we are we are constantly in touch with customers. And also, uh, we are also uh, uh, working on the back end to get the confidence back from the people, from the 3 uh, uh, people whom we, uh, uh, who were not uh, there with us uh, during this period for due to this volume down and all. So hopefully we will, uh, we will be able to make it. So that's how, so it, it's a kind of a coordination that will happen as, uh, as the, uh, so it's difficult to predict uh, the figures, but still uh, customers have their own, uh, gut feeling that, uh, how much they, they would achieve and that the onus comes towards and so how then it's to fulfill that. Mm. You know, there's one small point out there. Um, so those are not specific to efficiency food retail, but general retail, I think, you know, uh, retailers must consider, you know, uh, that uh, the product mix which is going to sell in this Diwali would be different than what it was last Diwali. So if they kind of take the same, same, same template and they want to tell the same price band, same kind of items, you know, discretionary items obviously will be under pressure. So I think they need to realize that, you know, the same merchandising principle uh, will not work in Diwali. That's what my, I feel. Uh, so some, some or the other, the the, uh, the way how you approach has to change. So there is also a fact that is there is not of not lot of uh, manufacturing which has happened at the side of fashion also during this lockdown. Mm. So mm. most of them have lot of inventories for this season which is not uh, sold also. So uh, it it depends on how the retailers and all approach. Uh, uh, with their with their strategies and communicate people, people will anyways uh, anyways are eager to go out as uh, as the lockdown opens. They'll 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 be certain spot and the people visiting malls and all, and that will that will enhance certain shoppings. But this would this this Diwali period will be too early to uh, uh, estimate uh, the actually uh, the actual uh, buying pattern. No, I'm no, all, I'm, all I'm saying is that Mandar, what I'm saying is. Uh, Say if you look at a very large, you know, people will buy a large, uh, you know, the flat screen TV, uh, electronic, stuff, people, yeah. electronic stuff, you know, they may not, you mm -hmm. know, so instead of kind of you know, buying a very expensive dress shirt, 
they may kind of, they may not buy it you know because people are not you know they if they're not going that often to kind of you know the work or whatever you know possibly you will you will buy a kind of you know maybe bookshelf will sell you know because you know that's what you, you, you people will see in a kind of when you are on a video conferencing you know uh, but i'm just kind of you know in a, in a lighter manner but you know basically that's what so we need to re look at the merchandising mix what will sell diwali then the last diwali and it's not about i think so you know it it has to be done you know the, the everybody in their categories whether it's home whether it's kind of food whether it's kind of they need to make so it's like in the sugary you know sweets and all that you know because it's mm-hmm. been told that the covid you not have, you're not supposed to consume the sugary stuff so maybe the mitha will be less you don't know i'm just saying that and i i will predict that it will be less because people will consume lots of a lot of sugary mitha this diwali because you know it's been told that you know you are become more vulnerable when you are eating those uh, the sweet stuff uh, with covid right or wrong or whatever but it will happen so if you if you get a lot of laddus like you had last last year you know you may have correct <laughs> yeah very true okay uh, imagine diwali without laddus very hard to do but yeah. anyway yeah but uh, maybe, i apologize maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe it will be ragi laddu or something. You know, they never know what it will be. <laughs> sure. Sure. So I apologize to the attendees and the uh, uh, speakers as well. We have run over time. I would have loved to um, have a few more pieces of conversation. One, perhaps, about the social angle of retail, especially uh, Dipankar and Mandar. You have operations which are deep, deep into retail, uh, sorry, rural areas. That would have been very nice. But anyway, so uh, we're just over time. I think we'll uh, stop now, and this is at least for me and and for Kosh. And I say this on behalf of Koshik as well. This has been lovely hosting you. I hope the attendees found it interesting as well. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Swas, for uh, uh, inviting and uh, uh, a part of this very valuable uh, discussion which which had happened. Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank Thanks for listening. Thank you, gentlemen. And till we chat again. Namaste.